Hi guys, welcome to lesson of partial differential equation. So in the previous class, we solved an example of heat equation using the Laplace transforms. And now in this class, we are going to take some more examples uh, of heat equation using the Laplace transforms. So this is example number two, right? So we need to practice a lot of examples so in order to make things easier, right? So this is the heat equation with the boundary conditions. There are mixed boundary conditions and also they are non-homogeneous time dependent boundary conditions, right? So now we are already aware of uh, applying the Laplace transform method and we are very much familiar with the steps that are to be used in the solution of this equation using Laplace, right? So this is the initial condition plus cos three pi x over two. Right, so we are going to solve this using the transforms. So here, what we will do first step is to apply Laplace transform on equation one. Let's say this is equation one. So applying transform on one. So this will be Laplace of ut minus Laplace of uxx. This equals to Laplace of e raised to the power t. All right, so the Laplace of ut will be su minus u of x comma zero that is given as the initial condition this one and then minus this will be the second derivative of u right with respect to x and then laplace of e to the power t is one over s minus one you can write here because laplace transform of e to the power a t is equals to one over s minus a right <clears throat> so here a is equals to one in our case therefore we write like this one over s minus one right so this is the identity here we can see that uh, we can plug in the values minus u of x comma zero is given as x minus one minus cosine three pi x over two, All right? Minus d squared u over dx squared is equals to one over s minus one. Now we will simplify this equation and we can see it is a second order differential equation. So we can simplify this equation in this way. So it will be negative x, negative one, negative cosine three pi x over two, and then negative one over s minus one. All right, so, um, yeah. Now this is a second order differential equation. All right, so this is a second order, second order, second order, non-homogeneous. ODE with a constant coefficients right so this is the proper name of this equation <laughs> let's say that this is equation number two right now we are going to solve this equation number two <clears throat> as an uh, ordinary differential equation so uh, we can see that this is uh, non-homogeneous so the solution will be given by 
UH plus U particle, right? So first we will work out for UH. For UH, we will only take the homogeneous part, that is this one, D square U minus, uh, D square U over DX square minus SU. So the auxiliary equation for this will be R squared minus S is equals to zero, which implies that R is equals to plus minus square root of S. Then we can write UH is equals to C1 a to the power square root sx plus c2 e to the power negative square root of sx right so this is uh now we will find up this is uh so for up we will use the operators Operatory method that is simple to solve the equation. So we'll apply the operatory method on the equation. So it would be like this negative one over s minus one minus x minus one minus cosine three pi x over two. All right. So now one over d square minus s and times this whole function, we are going to solve it further, right? Uh, so up is equals to one over d squared minus s times minus cosine we need to separate this uh, trigonometric function because there is a difference uh, in solving this trigonometric function and these all other polynomials, right? So we will deal them separately. So here we left with this part, negative x minus one. Mm -hmm. So now we can apply the angle instead of this D. I am not defining this operator's D method here because that is a part of ordinary differential equations. So before going into um, this format you should be familiar with the operators d method or you can also use the method of uh, like undetermined coefficients to solve this right it's not necessary that you have to use this method you can use the method of undetermined coefficient as well right so whatever method you are in good in or suits you you can apply that right so this is product. Then plus, I can take negative s outside. So I will left with one minus d square over s. One over s minus one minus x minus one. And then this is negative, negative will be positive and uh, we will get cosine three pi x over two divides this will be 9 pi squared plus 4s and over 4 right so i took the lcm for simplification this will be negative and this will be 1 over d square 1 minus d square over s to the power negative 1 over s we raise to the numerator so that's why it takes the power of negative one and this one, right? So now I can write for cosine three pi x over two 
divided by 9 pi squared plus 4s minus 1 over s times now i want to open the bracket so i will get this all right because i can write here it's a binomial expansion to the power negative one so i will write it here that one minus x to the power minus one is equals to one plus x squared plus x to the power four plus dot 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 right so you can check this stuff from the books <clears throat> Therefore, here uh, we can see that and box it, right? So here, this four cosine three pi x over two will be as it is, divided by nine pi squared plus four s, and then minus, so now one over s as it is, but this one will be multiplied by whole of this. So it will be negative one over S minus one minus X plus one. And then we, this D squared here, this one. When we'll apply the derivative, this D squared means the second derivative, right? It means that we have to differentiate twice. This is operator, sorry, not derivative. This is operator D. D means D over DX, right? This is the definition of d this is operator so when we apply the operator here then we can see that the maximum power of x is one so this all will be zero because we are differentiating twice right so all zero and all other further terms will be zero because here will, will be d power four plus d power a eight like this right so we're left with this one only so here you can write the solution is 4 cosine 3 pi x over 2 divided by 9 pi squared plus 4s. All right. And uh, let me check something has gone wrong. This is negative one, not positive. So make sure that we are putting all things correctly. Otherwise it will give a bad results at the end, right? So this is, uh, now this will be positive one over S times S minus one, then positive X over S, then positive one over S. So this is the particular part, right? Now we will combine the particular and the homogeneous part because we know that this is the solution. So homogeneous part is C1 e to the power square root Sx plus C2 e to the power negative square root Sx plus four cosine three pi x over two over nine pi squared plus four s and then plus one over s times s minus one plus x over s plus one over s right so this is the function of x and s but we need to find the function of x and t right because we are dealing with the partial derivative of x and t therefore we need an inverse transform but be before the inverse transform we need to apply the boundary conditions so the boundary conditions are ux 0 t is equals to 1 and u of 1 comma t is equals to one plus e to the power t now we need that uh, because we are dealing in the laplace transforms therefore we need the transform of boundaries as well so the transform of this boundary will be equals to 
left loss of one, that is one over S. Then transform of this boundary, that is one plus e to the power t, will be equals to one over S plus one over S minus one, right? Now we will apply the condition. So first condition is here, that is u of zero comma t. So now the conditions are transformed like this. We can write the conditions like this now. ux of, sorry, not x, zero. Zero comma s is equals to this and u of one comma s is equals to this, right? This is the way to write this. Now we will apply the conditions. So u of zero gamma s equals to c1 e to the power zero plus c2 e to the power zero. And then plus one over s times s minus one plus zero over s plus one over s plus four cosine zero will be one over nine pi squared plus four s that will be equals to Yes. So this will be uh, one thing we missed here is that the condition is the derivative boundary condition. So first we need to find the derivative of the function, right? Otherwise this will happen and we will get our wrong result. So we need a uh, derivative first to apply the condition because the boundary condition is a derivative boundary condition. So ux will be equals to, when we will differentiate, we'll get square root s c1 e to the power, square root s x minus square root s, c2 e to the power negative square root s x, then plus one over s minus, six pi sine three pi over two x divided by nine pi square plus four s that is equals to uh, that is equals to nothing now we'll apply the condition so ux of zero comma s. A square root of sc1 minus square root of sc2 plus one over s plus, this will be zero because sine zero is zero. And this will be equals to one over s as a condition. So this will cancel out. We will left with square root of sc1 minus square root of sc2 is equals to zero, which implies that c1 minus c2 is equals to zero. Let's call it equation number one. Now we'll apply the second boundary condition. So second boundary condition is uh, non-derivative. So we don't need to apply the derivative here, right? It's one comma t. So we will apply the condition Now we will apply the second boundary condition. So this is u1 comma t is equals to c1 e to the power square root of s plus c2 e to the power negative square root of s plus one over s times s minus one 
plus one over s plus one over s plus it will be four cosine three pi by two right because x is one over nine pi squared plus four s that is equals to one over s plus one over s minus one all right so cos three pi by two is zero so this term will be zero and we will left with c one e to the power root s plus c two e to the power negative root s plus oh uh, this one over s will be cancelled with this one over s so we will left with uh, this and this one over s times s minus one plus one over s is equals to one over s minus one all right so c1 e to the power s plus c2 e to the power negative s root s sorry plus we will take the lcm so it will be one plus s minus one over s times s minus one is equals to one over s minus one which means that this will cancel and we will left with <clears throat> one over s minus one so this will be cancelled with this right again we will left with c1 e to the power root s plus c2 e to the power negative root s is equals to zero we can call it equation two so now we have a system of two homogeneous uh, different uh, linear equations normal equations right so we can we know that these are homogeneous so we will have only trivial solution only trivial solution right which means that c1 is equals to c2 is equals to zero so uh, in this case, we will get the only trivial solution. We might get non-trivial solution as well in maybe in, in some other cases, but in this particular case, we will get uh, a trivial solution. You can check by solving equation one and two, you will get C10 and C20, right? Because both of the boundary conditions are given zero. So now the final, you will be, in fact, U of X comma S will be, equals to one over s times s minus one plus x over s plus one over s plus four cosine three pi over two x divided by nine pi squared plus four s now we have a function of x comma s but but we need to find the function of x comma t therefore we need to apply the inverse transform to this problem so we will apply apply laplace inverse transform therefore inverse transform on u x comma s is equals to inverse transform on every element. We will apply the transform on each element. Or we can take the LCM of this function. We can write it. Uh, these two functions of S are here, this one and this one. So their LCM, we already get that there is one over s minus one so we can write one over s minus one right then plus x is x will be treated as constant so we will have laplace inverse of one over s then 
plus four cosine three pi over two x is treated as constant and we will find the inverse of nine pi squared plus four s right here now the inverse of this function will be e to the power t plus inverse of one over s is simply x plus now for finding the inverse of this function we first need to uh, free this s from this four so we need to divide for the whole whole equation so we will get four cos three pi over two x divided by four we are taking four as common by fours therefore we need to divide four here now this is like this right so this is solvable now so this will be x plus e to the power t plus cosine 3 pi by 2x times now the laplace of this will be e to the power negative 9 pi squared over 4t right so now the function we can write u of x comma t is equals to x plus e to the power t plus e to the power negative 9 pi squared over 4t cosine 3 pi over 2x so this is the final answer this is the solution to the given heat equation with the given conditions right this is the method of laplace transforms so i'm writing some practice problems you can try these problems at home and you can give a comment uh, on the channel on the video below if you are finding any difficulties right so this is example three you must write yourself ut minus 2uxx is equals to 1 plus cosine 3x over 2 then u of x comma 0 is equals to <coughs> x minus pi plus cosine x over 2. This is the initial condition and the given boundaries are this one and this one. All right, so you can try this problem and <clears throat> I'm writing one more problem that is example four. Uh, ut minus uxx is equals to negative 4 over pi with the conditions ux of 0 comma t is equals to 4 and ux of pi comma t is equals to 8. This is equals to 8. All right. And the initial conditions are u of x comma 0 is equals to 2x squared over pi plus 4x plus 6 plus cosine 2x 
All right, so you can try to solve these problems and let us know if you are finding any difficulty in the comment box. So thanks for watching the video lesson. We'll come up with some more problems, some more topics, some more methods. And now we'll start uh, another topic in the next lesson that is uh, the method of uh, eigenfunction expansion, right? So thanks for watching the video lecture. Goodbye.